Hello. Okay, in this video, uh, I just wanted to go back to the last video where we talked about agency theory and transaction cost theory. So agency theory, we're looking at the different stakeholders um, and the fact that self-interest can create conflicts between the principal and the agent, shareholders and directors but also the different sort of interest of different stakeholders within the, the business. Transaction cost theory was looking at how and why companies exist in that it's much easier for a company to try and transact a cost than an individual consumer to go out and say, um, do something on their own. They've got to learn how to do it, how much it will cost. Um, they're only doing it once. So it will cost you know a lot more. Whereas if a company does it, it can drive prices down, costs down, and therefore make a profit. Okay. We also then looked at stakeholders and the different types of stakeholders. It's not just um, shareholders. You've got internal and connected and external. Okay. Next thing to look at then is um, Mendelo matrix, which looks to consider how directors who are running a business should think about prioritizing their time and perhaps give relative weighting to different stakeholder claims in the event of stakeholder conflict. As we said in the last recording, when you have a football club opening a new stadium in a new area, you have the conflict between perhaps the fans who want a bigger and better stadium but the stakeholders who live in the new location might not be quite so keen. Some may be, some may be fans and may think, oh great, it's on my back door step, I've got a less of a journey. I can walk rather than have to commute. But clearly there will be conflict. So Mendeley Matrix looks to, um, first of all, it, on one graph, it looks at the level of interest and from low to high, it plots um, their interest. So low is on this side and higher interests of stakeholders, their interest in the business. But the, the, the other graph goes low to high, and this is the, the level of influence that a shareholder has, over, a stakeholder has over the business. So if somebody is of a low influence and low interest, then as a director, you quite, I suppose, logically, Put minimum effort into looking after those stakeholders. The, op the other end of the spectrum of course is somebody who is high interest and high influence. They are what is known as core stakeholders. Clearly in this scenario you're going to be as a director keeping very much focused on their interests and keeping them happy and, and informed etc etc. The other two, well Keep satisfied, keep informed is about the only thing of differentiating, but pretty much keeping you know an eye on them, uh, but obviously not to the same extent as the high high category. Pervasive issues in corporate governance. The thing to think about here is the the exam relevance for what we've just been learning. Uh, you will find that the, the list we created in the last video you know, is a useful checklist for assessing the performance of a board of directors. The Mendelo matrix is a useful checklist for assessing the performance of directors and what they should do and how they should operate and therefore you bring that into your exam study, into your exam answer. It could be used to identify conflicting directors duties i.e. a takeover. So you use Mendeley to set out and lay out where you think stakeholders are relative to your business. Lots of scenarios when this could be useful, not least to possibly define what constitutes good corporate governance. So there'll be lots of scenarios painted by the, the examiner where you'll have to bring this knowledge to, uh, to fruition. Continuing with Corporate governance, a good list is 
to consider the fiduciary duties of a director, so their legal duty arising from trust law, they have a duty of care from a financial and legal perspective in doing their best to act on behalf of stakeholders. Directors' remuneration rewards, the idea here is to try and align the director's interest to that of the stakeholders and not of their own. So that's the, the main goal of stakeholders, is to make sure there's, um, what I think in management accounting speak is goal congruence, i.e. they're both in line. You try and create a board composition that has balance, both males and females, young and old, experienced, relatively inexperienced. That's the sort of thing you want to try and create in good corporate governance. Reliability of financial importing is key to accountability of the directors. If those accounts are reliable and reported timely, then you've got a good financial reporting system in place. People will trust it more than if you don't. You'd expect risk management internal controls to be considered through the risk committee or internal audit committee, those sort of things. You'd also be have directors looking at the rights and responsibilities of shareholders. You'd like to think that also their business ethics are sound and suitable and how they behave towards each other. Corporate social responsibility is something that's now coming into play more and more as companies have to think about the green issues, the environmental issues. Uh, stakeholders sometimes will only invest in a company if it is of sound social responsibility. So there is sometimes a premium that uh, both customers and employees will, will benefit from a company that is socially responsible. Finally, compulsory and voluntary best practice. So basically the entity will go beyond what is legally required. They will volunteer information in their financial accounts, on their website, in their press releases, to talk about and be transparent about their business and their operations. Not to the point where perhaps they allow competitors to get a competitive edge, but to go further than legally required is what companies are now trying to do and that's been seen to assist stakeholders in their understanding of how the company operates. Okay that's the end of uh, that video and we'll come back uh, in the next chapter to look at the chairman and the CEO and their roles. Thank you.